Let's go. Hello, everyone. I'm Cindy Cherry it's, uh, with my dad, Don, and my brother, Tim, and my son, Dell. He's at the controls at Don it Cherry's. Sounds good. Yep. Don Cherry's Grapevine podcast, right? So what uh, what uh, stood out this week for you, Dad? With- well, uh, Demko with Vancouver. Fantastic. He's right back. If he keeps playing, I'll tell you one thing. Everybody's got them out of the playoffs. If he keeps playing the way he did last night, uh, it's going to be a tough. I, I tell you one thing, boy, they look pretty good last night. It's, it's, how does the team look so good? Tyler Myers got one from the point. He got the winner from the point, eh? Yeah. 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 It's it's funny. Like you look and then, you know, like okay, you go you go. Toronto's going to make and it looks like Toronto, Winnipeg, or shoe ins. But after that, what? it could be anybody could well, fall. Well. Edmonton. <laughs> Any, anyhow, Deb Cole was the guy last night, did it last night, and I want to talk about Calgary. My buddy uh, Daryl Sutter is up 2 nothing, and uh, I, I'm reading the papers and everything that uh, he keeps the, uh, keeps the practices short and hard, just like I did. Uh, he knows what's going on. He won, he won, he's won the cup, and uh, they, they, they expect him. And what would the one guy say? He said, finally, we had a good practice. <laughs> no, that's all right with him. I don't mind with Daryl. So, do you consider him what they say a player's coach? Like, no, he, I don't. Know. What What's the difference there? I Why? don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to say. I don't think he's a player's coach. He, almost a player's coach. He knows what's going on. You can't fool him. The one thing that they said in the, uh, after his first practice, the guy said, "We never went to the chalkboard once." Oh, oh. I, you know, I hated that. I, I had a coach one time, you get up a good sweat, you'd be ready to go, and he'd call you over. You know why You know why they have the blackboard? As uh, Brian Kilray never had a blackboard. The winningest coach of all time with kids, uh, he never had a blackboard. He hated blackboards, and I never used the blackboard either. Well, I remember when you once in a while would go to Dell's uh, practices when he was, you know, little, four, five, six, seven years old, and you were always amazed how how much time the coaches wasted at their what? How much was it an hour for 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 ice? And the coaches would be well, they describing. do that in, 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 uh, in uh, training camps too. Yeah. And what it does is uh, look at that man teaching him. Yeah. And you have the players. Oh, boy, I gotta listen. To this. Go here. Go there. Go there. Go here. Do this. Do that. But we talked about this before. It must be tough on the coaches with like. Like Keith, let's say, you know, um, Dubas and Shanahan are always watching. Yeah. And you, Harry, never watched the practice. You know, it's the funniest thing. I, I had to be, I had to be the luckiest guy in the world. I, Ray Muron, with, um, he used to watch all the time. He used to watch behind a glass. We knew he was up there. Even if he wasn't there, we knew he was there. But Harry ne- never watched the practice because sometimes you go to a practice, you know that it's nothing there. Nothing you can do, mm. and then you got to drive them anyhow because you have the owners. And didn't one time um, the Bruins were in Montreal and they were fooling around? Oh, I remember that one. We we played in L.A. and for and it was something happened with the schedule. We flew directly from L.A. to uh, uh, Montreal. So I said to the guys, I said, "Do you want to just work up a sweat? You know, or you know, we landed in on Friday. Do you want to go the afternoon?" And have a sweat, and so they all wanted to. So, but they were kind of punchy, eh? and uh, they start. And little did I know, La Presse is is the newspaper up there. It, you know, it's a French newspaper. The guy was up in the press box, and he had a he had a camera. And I didn't know he was up there, so I let them fool around. And <laughs> we we didn't, we were in a losing streak at the time. Now, we didn't go into many losing streaks, but we we lost about two or three in a row. And uh, and and the one I re- and they started to let on they were fighting they weren't fighting but they let on there and they were ripping and, uh, you and know, they didn't know that the camera it was they being they didn't filmed. know the camera was up there and Harry flew in from Boston to see the game that night in Montreal and he picks up the first thing he picks up the paper and at Set Rice it had Mil- Mike Milbury and Terry O'Reilly playing patty cake patty cake patty cake patty no. cake. <laughs> And this was in the paper. Here we're on a losing streak, and and I knew he'd pick up the press. And, oh boy! And and had all it had about ten pictures. You opened up the the paper, and you know the middle part. The, yeah. The two pa- of Bruins having fun at practice. And, Did and you I, win that in the game or not? No. No. Oh, that was fodder for oh, Harry. And, and, oh uh, boy. 
But you know, I, he was he was the best general manager. I mean, he made a few uh, changes in that. But anyhow, Daryl Sutter, he's up two nothing as we speak. And um, he, I tell you one thing, boy, they, they re, he he's been around. He knows what's going on. So, Dad, the other thing that there was a big thing this week and on the weekend was the Jets and the Leafs. They had a three game set and and. Uh, so what did you think of overall? Well, let me tell you what happened there. A lot of people are watching the game and they're saying, how could the Leafs look so bad and look so good the night before? All right. Paul Maurice, who's been in the business for 4,000 years, knew that Hellebuck couldn't play any better. And you know that he's not going to play three in a row. But they put the uh, where a Port Alberni, B.C. guy in, Brasson. That's how I pronounce it anyhow. Anyhow, and he was fantastic. And you know, it's a funny thing. The players will always play harder for the backup goalie if they know he's going in. They know that this is going to be a tough game, and they did play pretty good last night. They, I think they outshot them. I forget what it was. They outshot them and because they worked harder. They worked harder. So and, when you were in Boston, you would put Joe Bear in. Oh, I poured Jilly. You know. <laughs> and would, so, like, would you do that, saying, well, we're just I never. I did that. I noticed it, but they, uh, they, I did it anyhow. What I did was, say we, say we had two good games in a row, and Cheevers played two good games in a row, and we we're going into Philly. Well, they pretty tough going into Philly and winning. I put Jilly in. Uh, I put any time I thought we were going to lose or the chance of losing, or if we're on the road, we played three in a row, Jilly would go in. And he set a record that it stands today. Yep, 17 straight wins i think he was winning just to spite you maybe well, he didn't like me oh well but did he have any <laughs> he had good no, reason I, you to. know but i just but I, like you look and you go well who has the, you, you'd go who has the streak for the most consecutive wins of a goalie you'd think you know patrick Roy, or you think of, yeah. of marty brodeur or you think of i didn't know Hasek, or you would think all the great goalies and it's and it was Jilly, Jilly, Jilly. and he was gilbert galore and he was not playing he was, and they weren't you know going into cleveland <laughs> and they, i used to throw them to the wolves and they, and the players again getting to, to toronto and winnipeg they played harder for him than they did cheevers because cheevers was the number one guy they play hard then but they play harder for Jilly, and he won 17 in a row, and that's what happened last night. They uh, Winnipeg, I think they shot him 35 because they played harder. And Maurice, pretty sharp guy, he knows what's going on. What is he five and one now? I think Brett's all. Yeah, yeah, because that's what that's like on the internet. Like when I was watching, and it it, it said uh, it was announced that that the Hellebuck wasn't playing, and it just like went nuts. Like why wouldn't you play your number one goalie? Yeah, he knows. And just Maurice like knows. everybody just was going bananas because, you know, they took, what, six, uh, uh, five out of six points against yeah. the Leafs. And everybody's going, oh, you got to win this. And, and, and He knows. It, but he'd been in the business a long time. And now, just to get off that for a minute, how about Lelaine going to, I mean, uh, uh, well, Patrick I, Lelaine. I call him Lelaine. Patrick Lelaine, going, who went from Winnipeg to and he thought he was, Columbus. When I heard he was going... You don't fool around with Tortorella if you don't put out 100% the whole time. And uh, I saw somebody, I, don't, I hope it wasn't Tortorella, patting him on the back. Oh, thanks, thanks. You bench me and you pat me. Well, you know, the funny thing is, like, like I was listening. I don't really listen too much to the guys on TV, but they did bring up a point that this is Tortorella's last year of his contract. Yeah, and they haven't. It looks like he's just, I'm just going to do what I want to do. and, and I, well, He's a pretty good coach. Yeah. Do you think does that why do you think he's going to come back or they're going to resign him or I just I, I just think he's thinking that he's moving on to someplace else. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he go somewhere. We talk about Pat. You know where he'd be good. You know where he'd be good. He, I think he'd be good in Buffalo, in a sense. He know he knows what's going on, and I, I feel sorry for that uh, guy in Buffalo because Kruger. Yeah. Kruger. I mean, everybody else getting fired, and he keeps his job. And he, he, you know, I mean, he was a soccer guy before, wasn't he? What'd you say? Yeah, he coached soccer at some point, but they're just like, you know, as you say, Skinner's got one or two goals. Eichel's got a couple of goals. He's out now for a long time. What did you, t you give me a stat the other day? I think they said uh, it was Skinner and Eichel and Stahl and somebody else had, didn't have as many goals as Wayne Simmons. 
<laughs> and Wayne's got a broken r- uh, wrist. Yeah, Wayne's he's played less games. He's making like you know minimum wage seven hundred. These yeah, guys are up are over like thirty million dollars. Oh, thirty each. million, yeah. You had mentioned Dad about patting guys on the back and all this. I, I can remember watching you, Coach. You never seemed to to talk to the guys as much or pat them on the back or you were pretty. I ne- I never ever embarrassed them. I, I, um, well, you did pat one guy on the back when he had a good goal. You should tell that story too. What's that? Bobby. Oh, when you yeah. Oh, uh, no, well, I was sort of a punk from this Rochester is your first year, yeah. in my first year. I was, uh, you know, in American Hockey League and Bobby Orr. I mean, Coach Bobby, Orr, Bobby Orr, the, the Bobby Orr, the greatest hockey player who ever lived still, still. And we're in Moncton. I'll never forget this as long as I, I, ne- I never forgot this. I this can is your first game, wasn't it? It was my first, I think it was, well, it was one of my exhibition first Exhibition game. game. I think it was my first game. First exhibition game. Exhibition game. And we're in Moncton. And he give the puck away. I don't know, or something. He, he, it was his fault. And everybody knew it. it was his fault. Holy smokes. The next shift, he grabs the puck and he goes right through the whole team and just wires it in the top corner. So, you know, I'm a coach. Yes. I go down and I see all the rest of the coaches going down, putting their arm around guys and patting them on the backs and everything. And I thought I'd go down and I said, nice goal, Bobby. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, coach. <laughs> Jeez. Like, and I, in I, true cherry fashion. And, what, never, and he'd get a hat trick after that. That was and it. He, and he won the scoring. What did he do? Now, let me just get this right. He won the scoring championship. Imagine that, a defenseman. He, twice he won it. And he won the heart, MVP. He was the first all-star. Norris. Uh, Eh? The Norris Trophy. Norris Trophy. I mean, there wasn't a trophy he could win that he didn't win. And then he went right from there. His knee was really bothering him. at the, uh, And I remember his knee was bothering him. And he went to Team Canada, and he was the MVP there, and nobody ever saw him again. Nobody ever saw him play in Chicago. And, uh, no, you know, he, I think he had 19 points in 11 games there and, and one knee. You know, he was sort of like... Uh, he was sort of like Marvin Hagler. I, I have to, one of my favorite guys of all time when I was in Boston was Marvelous Marvin Hey, I don't use the word Marvin. I call him Marvelous before. Yeah, I know for sure. Let, let, let's talk about Marvin Hagler. We'll tell people who, who he is if you, if you don't know who he is. But first, we just want to talk about our uh, sponsor, oh, yeah. Spreads.ca. He's a First Nation owned online casino and sports book. It's tailored to Canadians. Sign up now and enter the promo grapes, and they'll match your deposit up to five hundred dollars. You get fifteen spins on a big wheel to win some good money, and your first bet, uh, sports bet, they spot you twenty five bucks. So not bad. Yes. So Marvin is like that. Yes. <laughs> so one of I think my favorite athletes outside of a hockey player, and your favorite athlete outside of a hockey player. Oh yeah. yeah. Was marvelous Marvin Hagler, who was a middleweight uh, champ for. He won, the, and the last fight he had. Remember the fight he had against uh, Sugar Ray? What a jerk Sugar Ray was. I mean, he really was. I went to his training camp. The whole Bruins team went to his training, you know, a training camp. And, you know, he, uh, I went, we, 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 we went to Carmen Basilio. He was a great guy, Carmen Basilio. Canastota, come from Canastota, New York. The onion farmer. Anyhow, he was a great guy, and he talked. You know, he stopped and talked. This guy wouldn't even look at us, Sugar Ray. So anyhow, he and he won that last fight. No, and that was the last fight. What yeah, was it? that was the last fight. He, he lost a controversial, no, controversial decision to, right. to Sugar Ray, and then he quit boxing and he went moved to Italy and he became a big movie star. Yeah, but, and he really looked good. He he really yeah. he, he had he, a Fu Manchu. Yeah, he and people don't like he was he was a big star in Boston and everybody oh, knew him everybody knew him. and he terrified the middleweight division in boxing well you know, you know he couldn't get a shot he, he couldn't get a fight and finally t- Ted Kennedy who was I don't know if he's a senator or a congressman said if Marvin Hagler doesn't get a shot he says I'm investigating boxing well he should have too and so he got a shot and then he he and he always had a kind of a chip on his shoulder because oh. he, you know like he couldn't he fought he he destroy everybody and he couldn't get a title shot because nobody'd fight him because he was a southpaw, and southpaw and, too. Which, and yeah. uh, so then he fought Alan Minter in London, uh, was an Englishman, and he just with two I think it went three rounds, 
And so, you know, he wanted to get the belt and raise the belt. And the British people started throwing bottles of beer at him. They had to rush him out of the, you know, rush him out of the ring. And, and he, then, um, and then everybody who's a boxing fan remembers the maybe two and a half greatest rounds of boxing of all oh, time. The was Hitman. Him, him and Tommy Hearns. Hitman. Boy, that was at three rounds. And uh, you, you have, uh, you, you talk to an old fighter, eh? Boy, what that was the best three rounds. Of, <laughs> I remember watching it. It, one it, guy go, one that guy. Oh, oh it, it was unbelievable. Hitman, they call him the hit. He was a big tall guy, eh? Yeah, and it was like I think to me it's really the last time that two guys like them that were in their prime. Yeah. They're both in their prime. Like every now, both boxing, you see guys. One guy's kind of not in his yeah. prime, and the other guy's just coming up. These guys were the two best. Boxers and, and were they the good fighter? And um, Tommy Hearns was a real like they thought he was going to box. He hit was man, they call him. Hit man. He was. Gonna, I thought he was a heavyweight. No, no. No, no he's been he, he was big enough to be a heavyweight. Yeah, yes, I, he I was thought he was six big foot enough. two. So everybody thought he was going to box, 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 yeah. box, and they just went out and they just put their heads down and started throwing them. Oh. And, and then I was watching an old interview with Mike Tyson. And they, they asked him about Marvin Hagler, and he said he was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, middleweight of all time. And he says, well, didn't you think Tommy Hearns should have boxed him? And he says, no. He says, Tommy Hearns couldn't keep Hagler off him for 12 rounds. Yeah, he says, that's why I... He, would have, he says, that's why he did it. And that's the first time I heard of boxing. I'm a fermo. Remember that, Mary? So we have a couple of stories about, with, with us. Well, I mean, Marvelous he used to come in and uh, ruin my office all the time shake hands and you'd only shake very soft they like because didn't they didn't want you to hurt his hand you know the jerks yeah, are grabbing you know something. i don't mind a firm handshake but the, you know you get every once in a while you get some guy did that to you at the airport it, remember the airport the incident no, where you, uh, yeah i just come to i was carrying my hand. bag it was i remember it was in ottawa and i was carrying and i don't know we were coming from one place and i had my suit bag and i had the other bag so I put my, and they shook hands. He was a security guy. He was an ex mounty And he crushed my hand. I said, whoa, wait a minute. I dropped. <laughs> and Ron looked back. You Because you left, and then you went back and I found said, whoa, him. I wait a minute. Let's just do this right. Because, I, you know, I was tired. And, right. And I didn't think he'd crush my hand. He crushed my hand. You he, he, hear the bones cracking. All right, let's do this right. Anyhow, he did not, he was, he was, uh, I remember, he, and he was a cruel guy. Yeah, tell us about the time, the whole story. You went to see him fight a guy, uh, an Irishman in Boston, Jim Finnegan. Oh, Jim Finnegan. He was, he was a pretty, he was, everybody it, it, that fought in Boston had an Irish name. Remember the, Tim, remember the time you and I went, and now if you have Irishmen fighting, they don't, they don't, they don't fool around. They go out and they throw, boom, bombs, and that's what people like to see. So anyhow... We go to the fight. Tim and I go to the fight. <laughs> we were at the Boston Gardens, and but, you, you know, the, the, that was the Boston Gardens was originally the original Boston Gardens was built for boxing. Because we, I guess, because it was so uh, slanted, too. slanted. Because you, everywhere you sat, you were right on top of the ring. Yeah, it had that, a good. Angle. That's why people loved the gardens. If you're a fan, I mean, it used to be a few pillars. Yeah. But anyhow, so we're sitting there, and this guy comes out. He was really heavy, really fat. He's a fat guy. And they just threw bombs, and the people just went wild. So the next fight, the two guys that could really fight, you know, pitter pat, pitter pat. They were really good defensive guys, and so it was silence, silence. And about the fifth round, some guy hollered, "Bring back the fat guy!" <laughs> <laughs> and everybody just roared. Remember that? I remember one time he was fighting. Did I tell you about? Did I finish the story about the? Uh, Finnegan? No, tell us about you. Okay, it was, yeah, because you guys are playing in the afternoon, and then Marvin was fighting in the uh, at, at night. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you what he Finnegan. So I you noticed know, the first round. He 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 was really good. And he was really oh, he was fantastic. And he and the guy, this guy, be going almost knocked out. And he'd pick him. He he let him go clear his head. Then the next round, he'd almost knock him out, and he he'd hold him. He went, and I so I said. I saw him after. I said, marvelous. I said, I don't want to say anything, but I said, you could have knocked him out in the first round. Why didn't you knock him? And he cut him for 52 stitches. I said, why didn't you knock him out in the first round? He said, I'd like to see him suffer. <laughs> 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 and how about uh, Amifermo? Well, the, remember the time, though, you went to see that fight. Oh, you, you yeah. St you, stayed, you, you stayed 
you played in the afternoon and you said, oh, well, yeah, I don't I, want to drive home, so I'm just going to have a nap at the, in the dressing room. And no, then- no, I didn't have a nap. I watched the, our game. So I'm sitting there. So we played in the afternoon. The bull gang was really good. They could switch it over. They always got their money's worth out of the gardens. Oh, Either boy. the Celtics and the Bruins used to yeah. sometimes play the same day. So they had, to, they had to fight that night. So I thought, well, if I drive all the way back to North Andover where I lived, it was about an hour, eh? Well, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll go. Good about hour. An hour eh? uh, yeah, at least. Yeah, so I, I'd just get home and I'd have to turn around and come back. So all the reporters left and everybody left and everybody, all the hockey fans left and everything. So I sat in the room, had a few beers, and I had one beer, well, I have another beer. And so I'm feeling pretty good. So I walk out and I had a beautiful, remember that blue leather coat I had on? Remember that? The long one. Oh, that was beauty. It looks like almost the one Reggie Dunlop was yeah, wearing in, in uh, Slap Shop. The players called me Reggie for, what the hell they call me Reggie <laughs> yeah, for? Yeah, you, you did Any, look like Reggie. Yeah, I hadn't seen the movie. So I was long, so I, I come out, I said, well, I'll take two beers out, you know, two in each hand. And, I, and you could go in the Boston Gardens, you, but you couldn't bring the cans. You could, you could bring the... They were in a cup. Yeah, in a cup. So I, I remember walking out, and I, I never, ever sat down in the plush seats down below. I always, if I was ever, I was always up above where they stayed stationary, the seats. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I got the two beers. I put the seat down, and unbeknownst to me, the seat went back up again. That's right, because they're the newer seats that they put closer to the, yeah, to the ring. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I sat down, I went right to the floor. Oh, and everybody's f- looking at me, eh, because, you know, Boston Coast. So I got up, and I held the cans up, never lost a drop. And they give me standing They give you a cheer. Well, then there was the big time that... Uh, we were in Colorado, and this was Marvin Hagler's shot. So you figure it's, this would have been like 1979, and no, I'm 80, I think 1980. Yeah, so, it was 80. So he was fighting a guy named Vito Anafermo, and Vito Anafermo had like a really kind of weird looking forehead, and he would cut really easy. And so we thought, oh, Hagler's going to this is going to destroy be, him. This is going to destroy him. He's not going. It's going to be nothing. So, Dad, we were, on, we were in Pittsburgh, right? And I, I was on the road trip. We are going to Pittsburgh, then Boston, and then... And then mm-hmm. uh, so, Hagler was fighting that night. So, Dad says, I'm betting everybody 20 bucks that Marvin Hagler from Boston's going to beat Vito Anafermo. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, they didn't want to bet. They didn't want to bet, but, but Dad made them. I made the bet. And as you're getting off the bus, you said... I said, I'll tell you how confident I am. If it's a draw... I'll give you the money. Never dreaming it'd be a, a draw in a, a championship fight. Right? A draw in a championship fight, and it was a draw. Oh. And the funniest funny thing was, this is really funny. So I we're in the room, and I am really steaming. <laughs> like I'm steaming because I lost the money. I'm steaming because Hagler I lost, and Hagler money. beat the hell out of him for 12, 15 <laughs> rounds. <laughs> it was like a joke. It was the the fix was in. So the phone rang, ding, and I picked it up like the thing, and. He didn't know I picked it up. Uh, Jack Valakat. I'll never forget Jack Valakat was the guy phoning. And they were going to make fun of me because they were all in a room. They're all hooting and hollering. They're all ho- hollering because they know. And so I'm listening. He's, and I hear Jack say, Jay Moody, he's really going to be mad. And, I, and he says, and I'm phoning him right away. And he says, and I'm the guy phoning him. And, I, and he's, he says, do you think he's going to be mad? The guy says, oh, he's going to be mad. I'm, I'm listening on the phone. He said, well, I'm not phoning him. If you guys want to talk to him, I'm not talking to him. And he hung up. <laughs> and so now the next fight, uh, Anna Fermo got his uh, uh, eyebrows shaved. It cost, cost him 10 because he didn't want him to cut again. Yeah, like, yeah, because he did. Like he's, he was, uh, the joke with Anna Fermo was he started to bleed during the national anthem. <laughs> yeah. And so he got, he had plastic surgery and he had a, all his brow shaved down so it wouldn't couldn't cut and they got rid of all the scar tissue and we were at actually at the fight we yeah. were, was at the boston gardens and they got us a box and was about the second round he cut him on purpose he butted him on purpose <laughs> he butted out. him on purpose so he'd bleed and then he just and then, annihilated him yeah he cut like and you know the one thing anna Fermo didn't want to do was like get cut and he boy did he ever coco bop him though he, he did it and he could have beat him with one hand right so I talked to a guy going out, you know, a little guy. And I said, why would he do that? And he said, that's the way he is. That's the way Barbara is. And he's a mean guy. 
Yeah. And but you know what? And uh, he, he never lost a fight. He never really did. He never lost that fight to, to, to Sugar Ray. I never forgot that fight. He, he should have won. Yeah. The one thing, too, I, I like for a lot of people who uh, may be a little bit younger that, and th- th- we were talking about the Tommy Hearns fight. Yeah. And back then, you had to go to a rink to watch the fight. It wasn't like it was on HBO yeah. or anything and you could watch at home. And it was pretty, it was dangerous going to those well, things. Well, you didn't fool around there. You mind your own business. Because, like, if you go to a Leaf game, 90% of the people are rooting for the Leafs. Or you go to a Boston Garden or Philly, they're all rooting for the home Vancouver. team. You, like the Boston, we went to, to see Hagler Hearns at the Maple Leaf Gardens, and it was jammed. Yeah. And they had people in the seats, like, it was packed. And half the guys were rooting for Hagler, and half the guys were rooting for Hearns, and everybody was drinking, and it was... Yeah. Get, Remember it, the time we went to see Barry McGuigan, I think it was. Right. In, in the Varsity's Arena. And he fought a guy named Cruz. Yeah. And so there was a guy there, a professor or something, and he had, he had a big blade, and he kept asking people questions. And I said to Tim, I said, Tim, if anything happens back of us, don't say a word. I said, don't even look back, because I said... There's going to be trouble back there. And I remember you saying, why? And I said, just don't, because this guy was bugging the, the fight. He had, like he had a big textbook. And, you know, he was like, he had the attitude of, here I am looking at the, you know. Professor The type. professor looking at the Neanderthals, the, Neanderthals, the troglodytes. And analyzing Yeah, them. analyzing it and all that. <laughs> and there was a controversial decision. The guy picked up the book. The guy, the guy, the, uh, one of the fans picked up the book and uh, and just fired it up against the <laughs> wall. The paper. spine broke and the papers <laughs> went everywhere. Then it hit a guy and he turned around. Who hit me with the book and just at all? And I said, "Don't even look around because." Well, even at that Marvin Hagler again, like that Marvin Hagler Tommy Hearns fight at the Gardens, like everybody was smoking and they kept saying, "Don't smoke because you can't <laughs> see the screen, right?" Because the smoke was they kept, but everybody was smoking and uh, we saw one guy that we we kind of knew. Remember, yeah. he got into a, got into a fight. He, 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 had, he had too much to say. He was all cut to ribbons. Guys, and a, a funny thing was, like, they, I mean, it was better than most of the prelims. These two guys were fighting, and the one guy that we kind of knew was leaning against the boards after. Because yeah. they, 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 they had the boards of the rink boards, but then they had seats in the middle. And he was just, blood was just pouring off him. And I he thought, didn't fool around in those days. I thought, well, the police didn't want to arrest anybody because I think the police wanted to watch the fight, right? <laughs> so, how about how about Barry McGuigan, an Irish guy? He's from he was from Northern Ireland, eh? I think he's from Ireland, yeah. Eh? And he lost the fight. He hit a guy on uh, on the it's supposed to have hit low. He lost the fight on the hit low. Yeah. And I just going bananas. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, that was uh, and you know, when I think about it, they were all Irish guys in the washroom. And I'm you know, I've taken a and I'm going. You they didn't. And good, good job. They're all Irish guys in the, yeah. you know, because they felt the same way. Yeah, but I mean, like I've watched a lot of fights, like at home with with TV, you know, and, and like you know, you get there and oh, what's the Leaf game on? And you click over to see what the Leafs are and stuff. But when you were at the like the Gardens and having to watch it, it was almost like you were there. I re- I remember I remember at the Boston Gardens, uh, Johnny Saxon, Johnny Saxon. Nobody's ever heard of him now. I remember he came in. I was way up on top. I was playing. I was playing. I, I think I was there. I think I was there for. Uh, I was a standby for the Bruins or something. I was way up on top, and he came in. And I forgot who he fought, but he came in. Boy, he li- ever looked good, and uh, he lost. And I remember at the fights. I just loved the fights. And I, let me tell you one l- more last story about uh, Richard and I. My my brother Richard and I. We were really fight fans, and you couldn't get. Um, you couldn't get the uh, on TV. You could drive to Watertown, New York, and you could see them there. So <laughs> we went to see. We really liked Isaac Logart, and he was fighting a guy named Virgil Aikens, who was about thirty-eight years old. And um, we drove all the way over, and we're sitting at a bar, and <laughs> we're watching the fight. And Isaac Logart got knocked out, sitting on the ropes, like you know, and it was a TKO. And we're thinking, and, and like two grooves. We were like two grooves. Can you imagine Isaac losing, losing to Virgil Lakens? And, and 40 years later, we find out Blinky Palmero owned both fighters. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll tell one quick, uh, one quick story about boxing. Was at, I've been to Vegas to see more than a few fights. So I went down to see, I wanted to go down to see um, uh, George Foreman fight. 
said, and he was fighting. He was fighting a guy named Schultz, and at the MGM Grand. So I went down, and and so I think a couple of us went down. So mom came down because she liked Vegas, right? Mom really liked Vegas. So we were sitting having dinner at this nice steakhouse, and guess who comes in? George Foreman. So he comes in, and he's sitting at the table. And you know how before he was like, oh, I'm going to eat, you know, like he was doing the, still doing the uh, George Foreman grill. The back, grill. That, and he yeah. was eating cheese. Yeah, which and, I bought. Uh, yeah, I and, have one. Yeah, yeah, we all have one. We all had one. And, but he had, he had just a little salad with oil and vinegar. Well, he was losing weight. Eh? So I had my ticket with me and I thought, boy, I'd like to get, get an autograph, right? And he was having dinner and mom goes, well, go have one. Go get his autograph. I said, mom, I said, mom, you know how. Dad, you know, when you're having dinner, you don't like. Mom goes, you know, everybody, how many times have we had dinner and people ask your father for an autograph? You don't mind. This is the time that you can do it. So I was thinking, no, nah. I said, Mom, I don't want to do it. Mom, yeah, go ahead and do it. So I said, yeah, I think I should. So I went up and I said, hello, Mr. Foreman. I'm, my name's Tim and I've come all the way from Toronto to see your fight. He was very gracious. Oh, thank you, Tim, for coming down. He's I a really, good guy. Yeah, uh, thank you for the support. That's very nice of you. And I said, you know, could I sign your ticket? So he signed the ticket for me. And I sat down, and then just everybody came. Oh. And, like, he got to get up and leave. And Mom and I felt so bad. I thought, see, you know, I said, we knew that was going to happen, and you had to do it. And so I still, I had You know to- what? He probably liked it. He probably he looked like a good guy. He does. He was. He was, you know, he was very gracious. He said, oh, thank you for coming down to Toronto. I like Toronto. I fought, uh, I think he, t- he says, I fought four guys there one time. Yeah. He- and and uh, that was the thing. He fought four, four guys at one fight. And um, and he goes, uh, I really like Toronto. And he was very gracious, really nice. And his, his true personality came out. Remember he had that reality show with a, a couple other people and people would bring their, their products and they would have to decide whether they would give money to uh, for the product. Sort of like Shark Tank, but way, way before that oh, time. Yeah. And George Foreman loved every product. <laughs> I'd buy this. I'd buy this. Yep, yep. I'd, and, and you were like George Foreman. You go... I'd buy that and all that. So finally they had to get rid of him. They go, George, you like everything. He goes, I do. I do like everything. Because his George Foreman grill was the biggest of all time yeah. for info commercials. And we all went out and bought one. Are they any good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah they were They were I before their time. Yes. I, they, they were, were way ahead of their time. They were way ahead. Of, and so was his info commercial way ahead of. And a lot of people, that's how they knew him for was because of his George Foreman yeah. grill. Yeah. Well, we had even, like, we'll, we'll talk about it some other time. But we had uh, um, uh, Joe Frazier on the Grapevine Show. Oh, we yeah. We had some good stories with him. Sean O'Sullivan, Sean fighter. Sean O'Sullivan, yeah. Really? And uh, we also had uh, George Cavallo. He was really good. Oh, George it. is funny. So we'll, we'll talk about, we'll have, we'll run some of those shows this summer. Yeah. And thing, but uh, we got, we should be start to wrap it up, Dad. We're getting late, but we just want to say hello again to Bobby Schmatz. Oh, my, my favorite hockey player. You know, you know that his last year, I should have looked it up, but his last year he had 26 goals. And he never played again. Imagine him, 26 goals now. Guys get 14. <laughs> they get $8 million. But he was my favorite when uh, when we was in Boston. I, he used to get in trouble once in a while, but he was still my favorite. Yeah, I remember Mom and I were driving, and we were in, living in North Andover, and it was a bit of a windy road in North Andover, and there was this guy in a Corvette, and he was waving to us. We had the T-top open, and... He's waving to us. He's waving to us. And we don't know anybody with a Corvette. And he kept waving and waving. And he was, you could see he was getting annoyed that we weren't waving back. And then Bobby Schmatz, it was him driving. And he sat on the edge of his car, driving about probably around 50 <laughs> miles an hour through this really winding road, waving. I mean, oh, mom goes, Schmatzy. So we waved and all that and got back. And, uh, it, you know, his car was Russ Conway, the guy that wrote the book yeah. about uh, Alan, Alan Nicholson. Nicholson. So we just wanted to say hello to, to Bobby. Bobby is one of my favorite players, and uh, and uh, everybody knew it. And he was like I told you, he was a straw boss. And you know, I get asked to, uh, by a couple of guys, to explain the straw straw boss again. Okay, uh, this will be my last time. And he was the straw boss. He was always coming up if somebody was in trouble with me. He was always the guy coming in. And uh, straw boss is a guy. If you have uh, twenty laborers, and he gets the same money. But there's always a leader in the, and if you wanted those guys to work overtime, you always went to that guy and say, I like those guys, and he, that's what the straw boss is. And Bobby was a straw boss, and he was always, 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 if, if, if somebody was in trouble with me, he was the first guy there. He was, he, was the, he was a tough guy, but he was a good guy. 